G'day. In today's video, I'm opening up a Lenovo TB-X505F, which hopefully you can see here. And this particular one has got a damaged charger port on it. So what I'm going to be doing is opening this up to replace that charger port. So to begin with, I'm going to take out the SIM tray over here, which should hopefully give me some pry space to be able to take the back cover off this. So from here, I use a couple of different tools. Hopefully I can mainly use my plastic ones. And if not, I'll have to use a metal one. So to begin with, I'd say around this gap here, the back cover looks like it should be able to come off. So I'm hoping I can get this in here and twist. We can start it off from there, like that. And just work our way around. This I have also been heating up to 75 degrees Celsius on my blue heat pad here. And so far, that seems to help opening up certain devices. Uh, that section there doesn't want to lift. Go back around the other way. Didn't try to start cracking the plastic over here. But right now we're okay. Inside here, excellent. It does look like we should be nicely repairable. Just lost the home button there. Put that back over here. We'll zoom you guys in. And let's go over what we got. So here it looks like we have the touch panel connector going up to the SIM tray slash SD card slot which then we're going up to, just lost the button there as well. Put them off to the side for now. Looks to be a microphone and charger port located here on this daughter board. So we do have a few things going on on this daughter board, but mainly our damaged charger port is right here. We have a connect, flex connector go, cable going across. We have the connection for the battery located here. We do have a relatively smaller battery. It does feel like it's a bit, a bit of wasted space. It could be slightly larger. Looking over here, front and facing camera, the main board itself, and flex connected to the buttons over here. So from here I'm going to disconnect the battery. So a single Phillips head screw. Let me swing that over like a latch. Wiggle it back. And should just be able to use a nail to lift this up. Like so. So that has now got the power disconnected. Also looking on here, this does here, I'd say here is the connector for the screen. So we have the screen connector here, touch panel connector over here. Now I'm looking at this section over here, I'll disconnect this one. And we'll have to disconnect the digitizer cable. Lift that little latch up, pull it back. I'm in. Next up these four screws along here. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to take off the shield from here. We do have one more further down. And there does look to be the connection for the vibrating motor, and the haptic engine, not quite as advanced as Apple. I'll lift this up. Take that out. There we go. And I should just be able to slide that up. I do need to disconnect this other connector up here. I'm not actually too sure what this one is for yet. Right, that is for the headphone jack. Lift. So if you're doing this on the cheap or Without any tools, what you could potentially buy is this board just here to replace it. So you should be able to replace just this section here if you don't have a soldering iron or if you damage it while you're using the soldering iron. Luckily for me, I'm pretty sure I should have this connector right here. And with that replaced or unsoldered and resoldered, we should be pretty right to go from there. So I'm going to get into that now. That is a little microphone cover. Put that out of the way. 
I'll turn off my heat pad and hopefully from here I can get into it soon for reassembly. So I've just finished checking out the new connector, installing the new connector and also just had it on charge for a little bit to make sure those pin connections are fine. As we can see here, we are reconnected. And you can see this red kind of goo. That was a pretty darn strong glue. It didn't want to leave, but it did manage to clear enough to be able to reconnect the pins. So from there, I'm happy as to proceed and install it once more. And then I'll leave it on charge with the customer overnight as they are away for a little bit. Uh, feed this into here. No, that doesn't look like it goes that way. Let's rotate it. That way. There we go. There to there. Connect that up. There to there. Yeah, connect it to the headphone jack. Flip that little latch up. connected the battery. Now we'll disconnect that so you can see what goes on there. There. Reconnect that. I typically hold it and wiggle it and push down. That locks it back into position. So the actual charging jack was a fairly well, the USB jack was a fairly generic kind of plug. It's of the variety that I don't really use that frequently. And I've only really seen them on super cheap tablets, so take with that what you will. And uh, these long ones here to put in. Okay, one bracket on. Next up, this connector here. Push down. This goes in the latch. Go over the latch. Drop down. There. I have just realized I have left a little rubber piece off the microphone. So I will need to take this back out again. And then I will also need to put those buttons back in that fall off, that fell off earlier. Push that in there, push it down. And that connector is just lifted off. Definitely not enough solder. I didn't like the extra heat to be able to do that. I'm going to leave that off for a minute, but I will look at trying to replace that or repair that a bit later.
and say it didn't like the amount of heat that went into there. Granted, redoing that shouldn't be too hard. I could do that now, actually. Disconnect that battery. I got a bit too fiery there, but we are reattached once more. Let's proceed to get this back together. Line these up properly. Here, one, two. Now just gonna put the back cover back on. And one replaced a charging port on the TBX or TB-X505F. Hope this helps you, and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye.